session. So cool. Yeah. I always like to keep it an interactive session. Um, so uh, if you guys have any questions or uh, uh, any 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 concerns, you can actually stop me there then and ask me the questions so that uh, you guys are up to speed. Uh, and then uh, um, uh, I, I kind of want uh, this more like a fireside chat than uh, uh, me telling like a lecture for you guys. So with that said, let me play this. I can explain. Okay. Um, so, like I said, I am, this is a very basic uh, uh, slide deck I prepared for uh, uh, many of you guys uh, uh, who uh, are just getting started on the mar um, stock market or you don't even know anything about the markets. So, that's totally fine because we want to. Get you get you started and get you up to speed uh, um, and uh, uh, without further ado so this is a basic disclaimer we always keep uh, uh, so so uh, it's simple uh, we are not uh, any uh, brokers or dealers or any financial advisors so uh, what are the uh, material we are presenting is uh, based on our experience uh, from what we have learned uh, uh, by walking the path so uh, uh, we advise to uh, use this for strictly educational purposes only, and uh, uh, obviously, trading all uh, trading uh, like any other kind of investing involves risk. So uh, you need to be cognizant about that. Um, so okay. this is always the problem when I try to present. Uh, okay, okay, so let's get started. All right. Um, so. What are some types of investments uh, that you guys are aware of? Uh, uh, can someone talk about what are the, some of the types of investments you are already doing or uh, you are aware of? Of course, I, I put it here, so it should be fairly easy for you guys to uh, correlate with some of the stuff you are already doing. Um, but what are some of the investments uh, you guys are, your parents are uh, doing currently that you are aware of? I think my case. I uh, guess real, real estate. estate and uh, gold. Real estate I, and gold. Good. Yeah. Uh, maybe land. I, I mean, land I, and real estate. Uh, sometimes they go hand in hand, but land, real estate, and gold, right? Yeah. yeah. I okay. currently do stocks. You currently do stocks. Is that yeah. uh, worship or someone else? Because I know worship. Yeah, I also very like active. that. Yeah, I know you are active on the uh, in the in the Atmia group, so I I know you are currently actively involved in stocks. But uh, yeah, but basically uh, from the for the bulk of the group, I am assuming the type of investments you guys are talking uh, most times uh, when when it comes to investment, uh, the the traditional investment mindset we have is uh, land, real estate, and gold. That's that's right, right? Uh, that is the Indian point of view, uh, Sandhi. I can yes. say that. Yeah, traditional yeah. that is Indian, what I'm saying. But from, American from... point of view, American point of view, stocks and uh, or uh, you know startups and mutual funds and uh, you know bonds, I can call it. Now recently, you know, yeah, I can say that. So, Thank you. So basically, yeah. Uh, from from um, at least uh, our Indian Indian mindset uh, is, uh, or at least the. The Indian diaspora mindset when it comes to investment, uh, we it the at least the generation before us, uh, when it comes to investment, they always used to like nine out of ten times they used to stay stay away from the markets. When I say markets, either the mutual funds or ba uh, bonds or uh, stocks or cryptocurrency, they used to stay away from them because uh, because. They, they, for for them, the investment uh, rule book is uh, it's always either land, real estate, or gold, right? Uh, but but uh, this generation, um, the mindset actually changed quite a bit, uh, and uh, we want to actually uh, nurture the next generation as well uh, to be more cognizant about the investment opportunities, and obviously. Uh, the reason why we want to actually invest in multiple fronts is uh, the diverse portfolio offers the best 
resilience uh, uh, i mean if you actually invested everything in one bucket then uh, you are always putting your entire money at risk uh, by putting in one bucket so the the more you diversify the better it is uh, uh, for your money to grow so uh, uh, we are going to uh, look into the stock market and i mean obviously cryptocurrency is uh, way too volatile uh, we will not uh, touch anything about cryptocurrency today or but the fundamentals of uh, uh, the stock and cryptocurrencies are uh, will go hand in hand um, so so uh, if cryptocurrency is uh, your cup of tea then uh, that's totally fine uh, but getting started with stock market is uh, something uh, we are going to look into today so before we even get started with uh, uh, stock market i wanted to just quickly play a video uh, i don't think many of you guys uh, are uh, aware of this but uh, um so basically mere dada ji ne 1990 mein mrf shares liye the 20000 kush acha aur unke certificates type mere paas dada ji ne abhi diye hain actually ye pichle 10 saal se pehla hi se ho gaya tha inko to main inko gaon se apne paas le aaya inka ilaaj kiya to ab ja ke thoda recover hue hain पर मैं जानना चाहता हूँ ये किस तरीके से और कहा सेल आउट होंगे या जैसे मैं इनको सेल करना चाहता आप बेचना चाहते हैं इनसे यस सर बाद आप तो बेच सकते हैं राजेश आपसे भी राय जहाँ की केवाईसी के का सवाल है वो तो अच्छा चल रहा है जैसे सबको ही पता है और मुझे लगता है कि लॉन्ग टर्म के लिए अभी भी होल्ड की जा सकती है बट चूंकि इन्होंने मन बना लिया है बेचने का तो इन्हें पहले डिमेट कराना पड़ेगा खैर आपको ये भी बता दे रवि की ये जो शेयर्स हैं आपके पास इसकी कुल वैल्यू इस समय की वैल्यूएशन के हिसाब से एमआरएफ चल रहा है करीब चौसठ पैंसठ हजार के बीच में उसके मुताबिक करीब 130 करोड़ के आसपास जाती है अब ध्यान रखिएगा सो सो बेसिकली द जिस्ट ऑफ दिस स्टोरी इज द कॉलर हु कॉल्ड द टीवी एंकर ही एक्चुअली टोल्ड हिम दैट हिज ग्रैंड फादर बॉट शेयर्स ऑफ एम uh basically back in 1990 and this call was probably around like 2002 or 2003 somewhere like in in about 12 years so so basically the mrf shares uh, uh his grandfather just spent pennies on those mrf shares uh, when he originally bought them in the 1990 and uh, uh, none of his family members were aware of it uh but uh, his grandson when they when he realized that uh, he was transferred that 20000 shares uh, he wanted to find out what their net worth is uh, uh, and then uh, he he was quite surprised and shocked to realize uh, the 20000 shares worth on the date of this video is about 130 billion rupees so uh, basically in in a span of like just simple uh, 11 or 12 years uh, when his grandfather was probably sp- when his grandfather spent about close to like uh, 100000 um that money went from uh, 100000 to about uh, 100 and actually 13 billion dollars 13 billion dollars uh, sorry 13 billion rupees not not dollars so uh, basically uh, this is one side of the story meaning uh, uh, you cannot actually get that kind of returns in land investment or uh, uh, gold purchase i mean uh, gold for instance uh, probably went uh, uh, maybe like uh, 10 fold 12 fold in the last 20 30 years but but this is we are talking almost like uh, 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 somewhere around like 20000 fold or 30000 fold uh, than what originally invested money is that's the kind of the returns uh, you you get in the market uh, meaning uh, uh, there is a very high probability to make uh, larger gains when you actually invest in the right stocks in the market all right so on the flip side i want to show another story here uh, basically uh, again uh, it's always it's it's not always uh, grass is green uh, on the other side it's basically like uh, this is one more story here i am showing where uh, someone actually uh, took a position uh, on the wrong side and now they owe about 106000 6000 to the uh, uh, trading company so so basically uh, 
you need to be very cognizant like any of your, a, a, any of the investment you try to make and unlike uh, many of the other investments uh, like uh, whether it is a, like a land purchase or uh, a gold purchase um uh, in stock market if you make a wrong decision that can actually that doesn't just eat away your capital but it can actually make you owe someone money so uh, the risk in that regard is very high but then the returns are also uh, even higher compared to the other types of traditional investments are we all up to speed on uh, uh, this point this is something i want you to guys to, i want you guys to uh, remember and uh, uh, focus uh, uh, whenever you are thinking about investing in the markets because if you are uh, uh, investing in land worst case you are going to lose is your capital i mean i'm just saying worst case scenario um uh, uh, you are not going to owe someone money of course uh, if you borrow something from someone then you will still owe them that money but if you just outright bought a land parcel using your uh, saved money you didn't take any loans on, uh, on uh, for purchasing that then that is the worst case money you will be losing <clears throat> but in the market uh, there is always a chance uh, uh, if you didn't know what you are doing there is always a chance you will not just lose your capital but you can actually even lose more than your capital that is a biggest that is the biggest risk in the market however when we look at the returns uh, the traditional uh investment uh, uh avenues like uh, land real estate or gold they are not going to uh, give you like 100 fold 1000 fold return i mean i mean that maybe in very rare circumstances they will but uh, but uh, uh, it's it's more seen in the in the markets uh, compared to the traditional investment vehicles is everyone good or do you guys have any questions uh, i mean i know it's a lot of information to digest uh, i can give, give you like couple of minutes uh, to uh, think and if you guys have any questions uh, do ask uh, before we move to the next slide are we all up to speed so well, i feel like this is kind of betting kind of thing if uh, randomly without study simply put here and there in the share market we don't know what happens right so how we can study and then how we can like a planned way to invest yes is this very very good question i i would not say it's kind of yeah i mean maybe in a way it's kind of betting if you don't really know what exactly you are doing and that is the reason uh, uh, you have to really thank uh, om prakash garu because uh, he is big driving force behind uh, the apsara uh, 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 i mean the atmiya buds program uh, uh, they are they are uh, trying to make sure you guys are uh, getting the right education about uh, the investment itself i mean even this series we are to doing today is uh, actually part of that because uh, obviously uh, even in the case of land real estate or gold if you really don't know where what exactly is you are doing that is uh, very simple uh, that is as good as uh, 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 betting right like i mean um, if you re if you don't really know like uh, what exactly you are doing or what is your uh, motivation for purchasing that land or real estate then that is as good as betting um, so so anyway we will go more on that later but uh, uh, thanks for uh, bringing it up siva or uh, i don't know exactly if you are using your parents uh, uh, id to log in or if that is actually your name but thanks for bringing that yeah, up one, yeah. one, one thing one thing i want to say that is not really gambling where you do the casinos and uh, air where you do the black jack and uh, whatever may be or poker this is not this is the real stocks are a real assets real tangible intangible assets yep. stock market is a share which is mm -hmm. a, someone's innovation someone's service industry to yes stock market you can lose and money but you have to do a lot of research what is yep. the company fundamentals what is driving the stock price and why how why the stock price goes up and down this is what oh. we are going to teach you with this session sorry sandeep no no so it's do not good. compare this as a as a you know, black jack and poker complete with that is real gambling it is not a real gambling it is about speculating the market market and how the market how the company will perform compared to the industry 
compared to the tea and the, what is the supply demand and everything yeah i'll stop here sir thank you no no it's all good thanks for uh, pitching in uh, on on there all right hey sudeep uh, this is uh, I, i i just want to give my just uh, brief about me actually i have 18 years experience in it industry because of this uh, because of i don't have any idea i never invested in shares that's why i told like i invested in land gold my mother or my wife asked whatever i will buy gold first like that, 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 that this that is, is good actually thanks om uh, prakash you actually uh, that is exactly this one to the kids to... actually this is very good thanks that is that. exactly the reason why we want to i mean I, i that is also the reason why i'm getting started here because uh, i wa- i mean i could j- i could just simply jump into uh, the charts and uh, start pulling the charts but but uh, i want to get the fundamentals right and i want to also make sure uh, they are understanding the risks about the market and uh, i want them to develop this cognizant mindset uh, uh, again uh, one good thing about the market is uh, uh, it's not like uh, 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 the good th- the, the best thing about the market uh, th- that's something i really love, love about the market which i'll go in the next slide is uh, market always gives opportunities so this is also some this is one of the key take away you need to remember uh, is uh, market always always gives you opportunities so so don't think uh, uh, oh uh, i have missed amazon i have missed uh, uh, google there might be the next amazon there might be the next google in the market which you don't know yet uh, which which is still in the making okay uh, i'll go over mo- more of that in the next slide but uh, uh this is six past 60 years of stock market cycles market moves in cycles meaning uh, uh it will it will go for uh, go go trending up trending up and then uh, there will be trending down times then always there will be trending up and trending down trending up and trending down uh, and so on like market moves in trends so if you guys actually see um so so basically like uh, in the last 60 years average data market kept trending up and gave an average return of uh, 151% uh, uh and uh, uh, in the in the last cycle in the in the trend down cycles it gave a return of about negative 34% so uh, what this graph really tells us is uh, if you are really smart enough uh, i i mean no one can really know when uh, uh, the the reversal will exact reversal or what the pinpointed reversal will happen but if you are smart enough if you actually capture these exact cycles then you can really amplify your returns in the in in in, in making the money right um so so basically uh, so uh, if you guys see the longest bull, bull cycle was uh, uh, in late 1980s and uh, it lasted almost uh, till the y2k so about uh, thir- 13 or 14 years uh, uh, the longest bull market lasted and we have the latest recession that occurred in 2020 uh, during the covid uh, that was the latest down cycle and it was it the market dropped literally about 25% and uh, we are just getting started on the next bull cycle um so so uh, we are about uh, uh, it's it's only captured till last year so uh, we just get start got started on the next bull cycle so uh, if you guys actually see the, the market actually moves cyclically and uh, uh, if uh, it's always uh, 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 the average return uh, if you if you are long in if you if you hold the mar- hold the stocks for long term uh, you are always going to make uh, uh, multiples in in multiples uh, of your investment over time all right um so any question on this one okay so uh i want to take take pause for a second and ask you guys uh, uh what are some of the fortune 500 companies you guys know of or you think of like you can shoot the company names uh, i already have a top list here but uh other than these uh, any other fortune 500 companies you can think of that you know johnson and johnson johnson and johnson it's already there yeah it's number 9 good uh, yeah keep going I mean the obvious 
the ones you 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 know of like the gadgets you keep using right like the apple amazon uh, facebook alphabet western digital micron micron western digital that's correct um, and then uh, um, uh, you, you, you you uh, alibaba uh, then you have uh, exxon walmart exxon uh, alphabet yes so um, so uh, let let's let's uh, pause for a second and i want to ask uh, do you guys know when was uh, amazon got, when when was amazon uh, founded it was after 2000 right it's about 99 yeah 99 or 2000 exactly yes yeah it's it's 99 or 2000 yeah in the previous slide if you guys uh, see uh, the the stock market is about 120 or 130 years old but the amazon which is now uh, the fortune 500 company it's actually is third in the fortune 500 companies you know when it was started it was started in 99 or 2000 same is uh, Google. Alpha, now it is it is showing here as Alphabet, but uh, Alphabet is the parent company Google uh, of Google. Google got started when it's also in the last twenty years. Microsoft, of course, is uh, slightly older than Microsoft and Apple are slightly older than uh, Google and uh, uh, Google and Amazon, and Facebook. It's number seven in the list. Facebook even started after these two companies, right? So, so basically, you know, you know, uh, can you take a wild guess of uh, what was the price of Amazon share in uh, 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 about, uh, let's say, uh, 2000, 2002 or 2003 when it, when it was originally started? Maybe like two or three dollars. Actually, it's one dollar. Oh. So, so it's actually one dollar. So today, you know, uh, what is the exact price of Amazon in just 20 years? Around like, isn't it like 200 something? 200 is after the split. But if you actually consider it to the original, I mean, basically, if you if you purchased one, uh, one stock at uh, $1 uh, uh, during original, uh, uh, when, when Amazon went public, uh, it's almost close to $4,000 now. So, okay. yeah. So it's actually, yeah, $1 invested in Amazon 20 years back uh basically or 25 years back uh is now worth four thousand dollars so if you if you actually invested like thousand dollars it's almost easy easy easily worth like uh uh four million dollars thousand dollars turns into four million dollars and uh, uh <laughs> you you cannot actually get that that's what i'm saying right like you cannot get that kind of return anywhere like uh, which which investment can actually end you up uh, in uh, in 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 getting get, getting you like 4 million dollars in in the span of 20 years it's not it's not going to happen that uh, that easily i mean turning turning 1000 uh, dollars into 4 million dollars uh, is is uh, not not an ordinary feat. I mean, even another example is Tesla. Tesla is even recent company, right? Uh, Tesla is even recent company. And uh, had you invested about, uh, uh, I mean, slightly more amount, uh, like like about uh, 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 maybe like uh, uh, $60,000, I'm just talking about uh, in 2020. It's already would have, you would, you would already would have made like close to two million dollars today. So so uh, that kind of returns you will not you will not you will not receive anywhere across uh, uh, the investment portfolios like whether it is uh, uh, land, real estate, or the uh, uh, or the or the gold. So like I'm saying, um, the market always. Uh, gives you multifold returns and then uh, um, like i said uh, uh, if you actually look at the market leaders by decade at&t parent company bell laboratories was the market leader in the 80s ibm how many of you guys know ibm I, uh, yeah good so ibm actually was the market leader in 90s then in 2000s you have the market leaders uh, like uh, the the 
Apple, Microsoft, these were the market leaders in 2000s. Then in 2010s, uh, you have Amazon, Google, Meta, uh, Netflix. These were the market leaders in 2010, 2010s. Now in 2020s, we are yet to see what is the next market leader. So the market leaders, they consistently keep changing uh, decade over decade. I'm not saying uh, uh, basically, uh, if you see Microsoft, Apple are still here. Uh, even though they are original market leaders, let's say in 2010s, uh, and Amazon, Google, uh, and F Google, Facebook, Netflix, uh, Tesla were the market leaders uh, emerged in 2010s. They are still here in the top, top Fortune 500. But uh, 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 if you actually see, the market actually always uh, finds the next leader. I mean, maybe the you you can you guys can tell what is probably potentially one of the market leader uh, uh, in 2020s. I it's think the, open AI came a little bit actually faster. I don't know what happened that future. Open AI, AI yes, AI, AI is the trend for the 2020s. That's for certain. Uh, so so AI, it, AI related stocks uh, and give me one major example. I mean, it's it's been the really hot. Exactly. Yes. NVIDIA, right? Like uh, NVIDIA just two years back was trading in uh, uh, trading in 110s, two years back. And then now it was, if you, if you consider uh, uh, pre-splits value, it's almost trading close to 1500 or maybe like 1200 or 1300. So, so that's actually a 12 fold increase in the matter of just uh, two, two, two to two and a half years. So, so the market always, always gives us opportunities. There is always a next leader in, in the making, in the market. You just need to know how to, how to go after and pick and invest in those next leaders. Yes, Deva Harsha. Uh, um, you have so, yes. So when you're talking about the stocks, you're, you're saying um, uh, pre-split and split value. What exactly mm -hmm. do you mean by that? So, okay, so basically, uh, what uh, this is not quite common, but what actually a company do is, is, uh, uh, does is uh, uh, when the stock price actually keeps going up and up, um, to make the stock more affordable, what they do is they actually split the stock. When they split the stock, what happens is, uh, let's say you originally own uh, one stock of that company before they split, and the company announced uh, they are going to split 1 to 10. Meaning for every one stock, they are going to, you are going to now, uh, you, you will actually have 10 stocks of that company. In reality, there is nothing changing in your ownership style. Meaning, uh, 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 basically, let's say, uh, so, so uh, let's say, let's, let's say uh, uh, there, is a, there is a pizza, which was cut originally into six slices. And you, you, you had one slice of that pizza, right? Now, uh, because there is more demand and uh, they want to actually uh, uh, are more people around uh, who want to who want to have a slice of the pizza, what they decided is uh, they decided to cut these six slices into an additional uh, each slice into additional ten slices. So now, instead of the original six slices, now you have sixty slices. So if you decide to keep uh, uh, your original slice of one, you will still receive those uh, 10 slices. Are you following? Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So your, your ownership does not change. You you still only own one sixth of that company or one sixth of that pizza. Yeah. If you want, you can actually, however, sell one of those uh, are, are uh, like you, you don't want to keep all the all 10. Uh, you mm -hmm. want to you want to uh, 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 take uh, reduce your position then you can actually sell now sell uh, half of that one sixth pizza or you can sell five slices uh, five slices five okay. new slices and you can still own five slices so whatever changes the company makes the portion that you own is the portion that you own it's it's it stays the same and yes. later on you can sell or keep yes exactly yeah okay. mm -hmm. that makes yeah. sense thank you yep so um so now uh, so basically what what i am trying to uh, uh, take away from uh, what i what i want you guys to take away from this slide is uh, there is always going to be a market leader in every single decade uh, meaning i'm not saying like uh, after that decade that company ceases to exist 
I mean, like like I said, like uh, Microsoft uh, originally started probably in the 80s or my 80s, and it is still existing today, and it is actually still number one in the market when it comes to uh, when it comes to Fortune 500 rankings. Uh, however, uh, uh, if you guys look at this list, uh, some of the companies which made it to the list were not uh, even even on this list or were not even existent in the last 20, just in the matter of like last 10 to 15 years. So the market is always so dynamic and it's going to give us opportunities uh, to, to invest and uh, uh, grow our account along with the next generation, next market leaders. You just, we just need to identify what exactly are the market leaders and you need to invest in them. Is that, may, is that clear for you guys? All right. Um, so, so basically, uh, um we just need to uh, we just need to identify uh, what are going to be the next market leaders and we can actually invest in them and grow along with them so uh, uh to add to what devarsh devarsha asked uh, uh, basically uh, so so basically uh, why exactly do you need to invest in the markets so so basically when you are actually owning a stock of the company you are literally actually taking a, a percentage ownership in the company. You know, what exactly by, I, do I mean by that is uh, basically like uh, you are now actually uh, owning the company's profit. You are actually owning uh, uh, the, you in the literal sense, you are actually owning the company. Yeah, I mean, how much is your ownership? Maybe very, very negligible. But still, it is it is that you are actually owning a piece of that company. That is exactly what you own uh, when you actually buy a stock of a particular company. You are in literal, in reality, owning a piece of the company, right? So if the company makes profits, you are going to be, get more money out of it. If the company makes losses, you are going to also receive the losses of that company, meaning your stock price might drop. Um, and then uh, if your company outperforms, then you can actually make multifold returns in that company. Are we all clear on this? All right. So uh, now, now, uh, now that we are all up to speed on uh, what exactly is the stock market uh, or bond market or cryptocurrencies, now let's look at uh, 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 different styles of trading. Um, trading or investing, basically. So uh, the most common tradings are uh, uh, either day trading or swing trading. And then when I say position trading, it's basically investment in, investing in the company. It's basically long term. So uh, you also look at it, the table shows uh, the trading time frame. Uh, if you guys look at the day trading, it's basically you are opening a position in the company and closing that position the same day. Um, so, so uh, I'll also go why uh, people opt for that. Um, and then uh, a swing trading is uh, uh, basically you are going to buy a position and then you will hold for that, hold that position for uh, not, 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 not just a single day, but uh, probably for like uh, uh, a day to a couple of weeks or few weeks in general. Then, then, then comes the position trading or long-term investment or long-term trading basically in which you are just going to buy and hold that company. Okay, uh, any questions on this? I mean, you guys don't need uh, the remaining uh, uh, things on the table for now. Um, and uh, uh, maybe the, the last, uh, last trade monitoring, basically in case of uh, day trading, you need to be active uh, of your uh, uh, trades. You need to be very active. Uh, you cannot actually like uh, I'll not say like you cannot step away, but you need to you need to come back and keep checking your uh, trades and see uh, they are moving in the direction you are expecting them to move. And then uh, uh, when it when it comes to your profit targets, you will be just making your profits. You will be taking your profits. Uh, was uh, in the in the swing trading uh, the uh, active activeness is slightly moderate. Uh, maybe you can keep checking once a day. Uh, in the in the case of day trading, maybe you'll need to keep checking like every fifteen minutes to uh, thirty minutes. 
uh, in the case of swing trading uh, it's you don't need to be that active you can you can you need to be checking probably like uh, uh, once a day is good enough then in the position trading uh, usually you you will not be checking that often uh, maybe maybe like uh, uh, once a once a month is good enough uh, you will be you will be uh, balancing and readjusting your portfolios yes dev dev harsh harsh you have a question No, that was a previous question. That was. I see. Okay. Cool. Perfect. So, uh, these are different tra trading types. Uh, usually, the most common. Again, uh, I don't want to uh, touch anything about scalping. Uh, maybe if you guys are, uh, once you guys pick up more and more on this stuff. Uh, again. Um, so so uh, then, uh, what is very different about what causes the stock market to move? so uh, basically uh, obviously uh, a stock market moves when there are when there are like world events like covid 19 um, why why covid 19 moved uh, the stock market so much um, obviously uh, what happened during covid 19 business is shutting down exactly there was a big lockdown right when there was a big lockdown what happened uh, like like uh, are there many cars going on the roads no so when there are not not many cars going on the roads what happened to the fuel like let's say today uh, you have like on average uh, uh, 20 cars going on roads today but during covid no car actually went on the road meaning no car actually refueled their gas so there is no demand for gas anymore so the gas price went down drastically that means uh, the com the companies which are selling gas now they don't know who to sell that gas because no cars are actually going on roads right the demand went down substantially or uh, so much another example is uh, uh, during covid lockdown how many of you guys uh, took a plane none of you guys went on a plane right until uh, the for the during the covid lock covid lockdown yes yeah, sandeep one thing i want to tell oil was sold at oil barrel was sold at negative negative price during that time because oil wells are so full and uh, oil companies they want to give free oil so they can take it they can they have yeah, value to you know fill the gap basically the, their storage went full the the oil shipping companies uh, oil oil uh, uh, export companies uh, which actually ship the oil in uh, uh, ships they 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 are out of capacity so exactly like uh, omgar is saying oil companies actually literally uh, gave money to to buy buy oil from from them because uh, they don't have any more uh, space to save that oil right and then the fly, uh, the the airline industry they, 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 they overnight they came to halt they were there weren't any flights flying so when there weren't any flights flying all these airline companies they are not making any penny on the, uh, uh, from 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 the from the customers right so even even they have to back pay the people who actually made advance reservations because this is an un unforeseen event so so the old events like this they can actually uh, break or make your uh, and and on the flip side the companies like uh, pfizer johnson and johnson Uh, uh all these companies which actually make drugs for the uh, make the drugs they skyrocketed because uh, there is a huge demand for the covid vaccine so the world events they can actually move the market and the company news like uh, uh, for example let's say apple announced a new iphone and uh, next day uh, they they actually sold to 200 million iphones for the uh, there is a huge demand in the market means The, when they sell sell 200 new iphone 200 million new iphones that means they are actually making so much more revenue and profit so that can actually move uh, that can actually increase the demand for the uh, apple stock then uh, the quarterly earnings uh, i don't know if you guys know about uh, all companies they are uh, by the uh, by law they are they are supposed to announce uh, uh, their quarterly performance and file their quarterly performance with SEC, all companies trading on the markets, they are supposed to uh, uh, keep investors uh, for the transparency. Transparency, they need to keep investors appraised about how they are doing 
at least on a quarterly basis. Meaning uh, four times in a year, they need to show their financials to all the investors. And it's, it's a law, actually, uh, to bring transparency on how they are uh, uh, performing. Um, so, so And they need to file that with SEC. SEC is the governing body for the stock market. And they need to file their quarterly earnings report with SEC. So when they have like uh, a quarterly earnings and uh, uh, let's say market was uh, expecting them to uh, uh, come in at uh, 1 billion profit, but because of uh, they, they they performed really well uh, and uh, because uh, uh, they had huge demand, they were able to increase the price and now they, they profited like 1.5 billion. Now that means actually uh, for every single person owning, like let's say, uh, it's it's as simple as uh, as this. Like okay, uh, a company made hundred rupees or hundred dollars, and each each shareholder is getting. Uh, there are hundred shareholders, and each shareholder is getting uh, one dollar. Now that same company made hundred and fifty dollars. That means now each shareholder is getting what? One point five dollars, meaning their profit increased by fifty percent, right? So, so basically, those kind of events can actually push the push the stock price up or down. Then there is a new contract sign. Let's say a, a Boeing company, for instance, uh, uh, signed a new contract with uh, uh, United for selling selling uh, uh, hundred new airplanes. That can actually uh, uh, increase increase the revenue and also increase the share price demand for yeah, them. Netflix, uh, Sandeep, Netflix uh, subscription went up, skyrocketed. Yes, yes. And then uh, hired, fired, step down. Uh, basically, let's say, uh, how many of you know who is the CEO of uh, Amazon? Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos is no longer the CEO of Amazon. But yes, he was he was original founder and uh, uh, la past CEO of Amazon. That's correct. So, so when Jeff Bezos uh, stepped down, that actually kind of will have an influence on the market on uh, um, how the how the price will move then uh, let's say jeff bezos actually usually sells about uh, close to 100 million uh, uh, dollars worth of uh, amazon shares on a yearly basis so let's say this year he decided to shell, sell uh, 500 million dollar shares then that will have a huge impact on the market meaning uh, if ceo uh, if if the company founder is selling more of his stocks, that means uh, uh, the market will start panicking and that can actually move the stock price down. On the flip side, if he, if he decides to buy like $500 million worth of sh shares, then the, that will, the, the market will see that as a huge uh, uh, positive and they, they, they will rally that stock. Uh, then then another, another example is uh, companies often acquire companies. For instance, uh, the classic example is Facebook acquired Instagram, Facebook acquired WhatsApp, uh, um and so on uh, so when the companies acquire the other companies those kind of events can actually move the market uh, move that stock so so there are many reasons why uh, the the uh, uh, stock price will keep moving up or down on any given day or any given time frame so uh, going back to the previous slide so if there is a huge news news event for, for a given day then uh, uh, Doing a day trading can actually help uh, uh, help you uh, build uh, make make good money on that stock for that day, um, or scalping or day trading. Uh, then then uh, uh, position and swing trading will probably might not give you that much return um, compared to day trading or scalping. Um, so so on the flip side, uh, you are expecting a company to take over. Uh, I mean, there is news that. Uh, a company is in talks, uh, Facebook is in talks with Instagram, and you think uh, that is going to happen in the next couple of weeks. So so you took a position in the company, and the news came out two weeks after you took the position in the company. That is what is a swing trading. You are uh, probably expecting a positive news to come out of the company in the next, next few days, and you took a position in the company ahead of time. And that gives you a, a multifold return. Um, then uh, position trading is a totally different ball game. Um, I'll talk about in the next slide, actually. So, so basically, um, what is key for uh, 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 short-term trading or uh, uh, long-term trading? 
So uh, if you actually guys see, there are actually two types of analysis that you actually do for any company. One is what we call the fundamental analysis. When I talk about fundamental analysis, okay, uh, so, so what exactly is a fundamental analysis? Fundamental analysis actually looks into three financial aspects of the company. Okay, uh, so, so uh, let's say uh, you want to obtain a loan from a bank. So the bank asks you for, uh, can you guess what, what statements the bank asks you in general? If you are an employed, you, you are an employed person. So what statement that does the bank ask you? If you, if you are going and asking a bank uh, to, to give you like a million dollar loan, the bank out one statement. year bank statement they will ask, I think. Perfect. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. And uh, uh, one year bank, one year statement. Then what else they, they will ask? They'll ask a license to company. Proof of employment. Perfect. Yeah. Your your proof of your employment. Uh, as well as your uh, uh, pay pay stubs or paychecks. Right. Proof of your paychecks. Right. I mean, yeah. I can I cannot arbitrarily go and ask bank to give me one million dollars, because bank need to know that I can actually repay them that one million dollars, right? So so basically, they want to really know how much are you actually even making. That is your income statement. The income statement is exactly your your uh, uh, proof of your uh, 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 basically your proof of the. Uh, money you are making on, on a monthly basis, right? That is your income statement. Then comes, uh, okay, uh, okay, you are making, uh, 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 let's say you are making like $100,000. So for $100,000 you are making, they also want to know what are your expenses? Meaning like, okay, you are making $100,000. But how much of that hundred thousand is actually you are saving? So they, they are also going to look look at your balance sheet. So income statement, balance sheet is your your uh, expenses report, right? And the third and four uh, the, the third most important statement is your uh, uh, assets, or uh, uh, basically uh, what is your uh, net tangible assets you are owning. And what is your uh, uh, net tangible, uh, uh, net net, net uh, uh, current current? Uh, 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 what is your net worth? And uh, what uh, what is your ownership? And what is your uh, uh, um, outstanding loans? So basically, let's say. Um, so you 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 made a money of uh, ten thousand dollars on a monthly basis. Someone has a question. I cannot actually open the chat. Uh, Omgar, can you please check and uh, relay the message for me if if it's a question. Um, so so basically, uh, let's say in the income statement, the bank uh, a person will know how much you are making on a monthly basis, or a quarterly basis, or an annual basis. How much money you are making by by working. On the balance sheet you will know how much you need to sp spend on a, on on your costs okay uh, so so what are the typical costs for an individual who is work like let's say you are you are working what are your typical typical monthly costs groceries perfect groceries what else You have to stay in a place. Either you own the place or you rent a pay place. If you own a place, uh, you can you you might be paying mortgage, right? Mortgage or if you if you are renting a place, you will be paying rental. So rental income. Then you if you are if you if you are if you are uh, uh, if you are having a car loan, uh, you are going to pay car loan. Uh, then if you are. Uh, 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 Car, car fuel or car gas, car insurance, home insurance, then your your travel expenses. Like I'm not talking about the regular travel. I'm, I'm, I'm not your commute to work, but let's say you 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 went and visited some place. Uh, 
those are your uh, uh, monthly expenses let's say uh, then uh, um, your your uh, television subscriptions right your television subscriptions your your uh, 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 utility bills power trash sewer all these are your monthly expenses right so even if you make ten thousand dollars if your monthly expenses are already covered for six thousand dollars what is your next net saving you are only you are only saving four thousand dollars so the bank can only assess you for those four thousand dollars see they cannot assess you for those ten thousand dollars because those are your operational expenses you need to spend those six thousand dollars just to uh, keep you afloat through the month so so uh, banks are going to only assess you for those four thousand savings but now again if i take a step back okay uh, so they also want to understand the risk for giving you the loan so how do they know the risk let's say your uh, uh, your mortgage is uh, $4000 uh, but but the principal on the mortgage is always something uh, you need to pay back to the bank so the principal on the mortgage is let's say is about $800000 so you you are in debt of $800000 but let's say you have another property which is fully paid off which is worth $2 million. Now your net worth is $1.2 million. So the bank can actually more, who, let's say you are a person uh, and uh, two people approached you. One person has, uh, doesn't have, uh, has a property which is worth uh, $1 million, but of that property, he still owe $800,000. Another person is also having uh, two properties uh, on the net, he actually owns one point two million dollars. Uh, he owns. He still owns bank. Uh, he still owes bank eight hundred thousand dollars. Both people owe bank eight hundred thousand dollars. But the second person, in uh, uh, um, uh, after after uh, his ba bank loan, he still owns one point two million dollars worth properties. So who will you go and give your money to? The decision is quite simple, right? You will obviously go and easily give your money to the person who is having $1.2 million because it's less less risky rather than uh, to a person who is already owing banks $800,000. You don't want to give another $1 million loan to that person versus uh, uh, a person who is uh, having a net worth of $1.2 million. It's as simple as that. Uh, so, so basically, there are three financial statements that uh, uh, we will be looking into as part of the fundamental analysis to look at uh, companies net uh, companies financial health what are those the income statement balance sheet and net assets are we guys are all up to speed on this so the income statement tells you what the company is making the balance sheet will tell you what are the company's uh, uh, operational expenses. Then the asset worth, uh, net assets will tell you what exactly the company owns as of today. Like, like uh, what are the company's net asset, tangible assets. So, so uh, then on the flip side, in the technical analysis, so uh, it's it's actually a big ocean to swim. Uh, the technical analysis deals mostly with the chart setup. Uh, I don't think uh, we can actually cover a lot of it. It's We are already on the clock. Um, I don't know how much more we can actually cover today. But uh, on, the, on the flip side, uh, the technical analysis covers of the chart setup and uh, uh, lets you pick the short-term signals or mid-term signals and use those signals to enter and exit of the, out of these companies. Uh, maybe we will talk more of that in the next session. Actually, I don't know, or uh, someone else might uh, uh, cover for cover cover you uh, cover for me and uh, uh, go or uh, that material for with you guys. But in the in the technical analysis, uh, it's it's actually doesn't involve anything about the financial health of the company. It actually involves more on the price action of the particular companies stock and we use that price action uh, strategies to enter and exit of the uh, out of the company and make profit in the, uh, while doing so so uh, so basically if you guys see um, 
uh, on the on the left hand left hand uh, 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 side you see like uh, whether whether the analysis uh, whether that style is effective or ineffective for short term trading the technical analysis or the chart reading is the most effective tool when you are when it comes to uh, picking entering and exiting the company but on the flip side if you look at the fundamental analysis fundamental analysis is very ineffective when it comes to short term trading so uh, the mid term trading is or the swing term trading uh, involves uh, both fundamental analysis as well as technical analysis which is what i really like uh, about mid term trading uh, and then in the long term trading it actually uh, nine out of 10 times it purely involves uh, uh, the financial health of the company or the fundamental analysis of the company versus the technical analysis of the company are we all good up to up to now i think this is my last slide probably i don't know or my my, my laptop froze on me what would you suggest us to go through and get prepared please suggest books or youtube or something to get going uh, very good question durga garu um, uh, i uh, there is a there is wealth of resources already uh, available on our uh, atmiya youtube channel and um, uh, some of those classes taken by me as well as uh, many many other experts uh, uh who had uh, good knowledge about uh, uh, trading and uh, fundamental analysis uh, you um, sheshang garu can actually share uh, the youtube channel link it's a private channel uh, you will need access for uh, uh, the youtube channel i would highly recommend uh, you guys going through the youtube channels i i will say maybe you will only get like 60 to 70% of the concepts and we can always brush on top of what uh, you get from the youtube channel and uh, that will definitely help uh, you guys to pick up uh, much faster on the concepts we are talking here all right um oh, omgaru uh, i think we are already uh, past 5 five minutes past 1 uh, o'clock uh, do, you, do do we stop here or i think i am already Yeah, yeah. I think you know, Sadiq. This is good. This is good enough. I think you can stop here. Let them digest. Yeah, uh, it's Maybe. too much information for them to digest as well, in my opinion. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah hey, Sandeep, Sandeep, I have Sandeep, one Sandeep, question. Yes. yes, please go ahead. Ah, uh, Sandeep, what what you suggest? Like, uh, suppose I am I am planning to invest on top uh, five companies, top okay. uh, Fortune five hundred companies, like uh, mm -hmm. SIP, Systematic mm -hmm. Investment Plan, probably one share per month. Okay. Do you think that is good without like just go to top five or just put it there like that? So, so people keep asking me this question again. Uh, I'm I'm not trying to offend here anyone or anything. Uh, but uh, uh, what I want to say is uh, yes, you will you will make money, Andy. Like like I showed in this slide here, this is the last sixty years performance of the stock market. Uh, you will see down cycles, up cycles, or down cycles, up cycles, but. if you stay long enough in the market you will always make money in the market so uh, uh, to get back to your question um, yes uh, as long as you are investing in the right companies and if you keep investing uh, if you keep investing uh, uh, in a, in a certain frequency recurrence uh, then uh, there is there is a concept of uh, dollar cost averaging or dca and uh, uh, you you will always in the long run make good 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 money in the market however uh, uh, how do how are you going to come to the conclusion what are the top 5 companies that is where we want to educate our uh, uh, both uh, uh, current generation and the next generation to really understand the concepts of uh, the market itself uh, uh, we have done series of so many series uh, out there uh, and we want you to get used to it uh, because uh, investing on the advisement of anyone is uh, basically you are not actually uh, uh, investing on on your own self assessment will give you immense confidence rather than investing on uh, it's it's like uh, 
it's like uh, uh, you are you are investing your hard earned money right into the markets right. or right. basically uh, yeah you are you are you are investing your hard earned money so if you don't care about your money no one else is going to care for your money that's as simple as that so you need to do the basic homework and we are going to give you the tools or we are going to empower you to really understand what are the things you need to look at in order to come to that conclusion or uh, do that your background uh, your your uh, uh, your your uh, deep dive into the market or you deep dive into that particular stock and really understand uh, what are the fundamentals of that company is this a good time to go and invest into that company or do i have to wait for a little more or do can i actually go and start a position and uh, keep averaging if it falls to this and what is my exit strategy for that company we want to teach i mean obviously we we do do this uh, like uh, uh, alerts uh, uh, kind of thing uh, but but let's say uh, we were busy on a certain day and we didn't uh, uh, alert on the exit mm -hmm. then then you might be still stuck on that company versus uh, you you getting empowered to do that analysis by your own that is what we want to drive our community towards we want to empower you to really know what tools are out there uh, what uh, uh, resources are out there for you to uh, go review uh, the data by yourself and uh, make that sound judgment by yourself hope that answered your question yeah 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 please uh, actually uh, i really want to uh, want you guys this is this this session i want you guys to be more uh, like a five side chat session not like me teaching you guys something and uh, you you guys are uh, uh, bound to just uh, uh, listen this class and uh, listen this like a class and uh, uh, move move on from here um, so so is there any youtube link uh, pradeep garu like i mentioned uh, we have a private uh, youtube atmia channel uh, sheshangar is on the bridge uh, sheshangar please uh, uh, share the link with uh, all of our uh, folks so that yeah we will post it in the groups only if you are in atmia groups you will get the links perfect thank so you Deep, currently there are ai things and all there right in the market yes. uh, what do you think those things will help us to buy right shares and sell at right time like that um uh, yeah uh, definitely uh, we need to start adapting to the newer technologies i would say so but uh, um i would say ai is still not for ready for the prime time at least when it comes to markets uh, because uh, uh, as, at least uh, ai uh, models are not uh, based on more recent data right so so i think uh, yeah ai will definitely uh, take over everything by storm um, by, by by brute force definitely uh, mm, but right. but we are not there yet in my personal opinion um okay. but again again uh, like i said uh, uh, it's like uh, you are you are uh, trusting your money uh, for a, for an app to uh, make judgments for your money i will not be really exactly. comfortable with that uh, personally that's my again that's my per individual perception uh, i mean i do keep seeing uh, these uh, crazy pop up videos uh, where they say like they made like uh, 3000% 4000% uh, by mm -hmm. ai trading uh, i don't know how trustworthy are those but uh, okay. for me for me i don't think uh, the ai is uh, ready for prime time yet yes uh, devarsha um so f specifically for our student interns um do you have any like advice on stuff to look out for in the future and like you know how to develop our knowledge regarding the stock stock market and how to do like research and like or is it just like looking at the news and all that like good you know, question like, deva deva harsha um so so basically uh talk to your parents i yeah. would always recommend uh, uh there is no nothing uh that can beat an experience mm -hmm. so uh uh and then the second and foremost thing is uh, uh Uh, basically you don't want to risk your actual money to to get that experience so uh, all these stock broking platforms what they give is uh, it's an excellent opportunity uh, they actually give paper trading accounts you just need to open an account with them 
and you will need to like remit like fifty dollars or hundred dollars, and they uh, you with along with the account opening, you also will have an access to their paper trading platforms. So uh, I would uh, highly recommend uh, people to do the paper trading account, uh, op go into their paper trading accounts. Uh, paper trading is basically like you are just trading with paper money. They are, it's not your actual money. You are just, and you will not uh, make or break anything out of, uh, by, by doing a paper trading. It's just a simulation platform. Let me put it this way. So, so you can actually uh, do the analysis and come up with these uh, 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 entry exits. And to test your entry exits, go on the paper trading platform and uh, uh, take the trades and see how successful you are. For me, until you are at least uh, having like 70 to 80% success rate, you should not be trading with real money. Right, uh, and you need to you, you need to practice uh, to perfect the art. Uh, there is no other way around. Uh, you need to really, really uh, practice, practice, practice uh, until you hit that uh, seventy to eighty percent goal on uh, uh, seventy to eighty percent profit trades on consistent basis, uh, week after week, month after month. Uh, you should not be start trading. You should not start trading with your uh, real money. Wait. So uh, when you mean practice, uh... Do you mean like, so not trading with your real money, but like trading with what, like? Paper money, yes. Uh, paper, paper trading accounts, right? So okay, yeah, okay. You, you, you will be trading in your paper trading accounts. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. That's not real money. You are not trading with your real yeah, money. You will not make any money. Yeah. Uh, Varshit, you have a question. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I saw this question in the chat. Um, yeah. yeah, so do you prefer to, um, fundamental analysis or technical analysis? When trading, I already made that clear, right? My 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 choice is uh, I'm I'm in the middle. <laughs> I I take the middle ground. Uh, I really okay. like uh, I I really like to mix both of them because okay. uh, uh, I mean most people pick one or the other, uh, but uh, I really like to uh, I really like to pick stocks which are fundamentally strong and which have strong technical setup. That okay. is when you okay. will get the most success. Okay, thank you. So, so for so long term, lo lo basically, yeah. Uh, I mean, I have a I have a long term portfolio, and also I have a, I usually do swing trading. Uh, not I'm not really active. I mean, you guys might not have seen me in the last few months in the Atmia group because I'm not actually trading anything in the last few months. I'm not really active because of uh, work and uh, other stuff. So I'm not actively trading anything. So, um, but basically I, I do, I do have a long-term portfolio and I do swing trading. So even for swing okay. trading, I, I would like to pick, uh, I mean, uh, just because a chart setup is good, I will not just simply jump in and pick those stocks. I only trade uh, fundamentally strong stocks. I will not, because the, 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 the good, the, uh, flip side of that coin is, uh, let's say, uh, a company is fundamentally strong and you were wrong uh, in your technical analysis and uh, uh, you want to give slightly more time to see like uh, if the if the chart reverses so so i'll put it this way um, i know you are you are uh, doing trading for a while so i think you will understand what i am trying to say so let's say you picked a meme stock like a gme you know gamestop right yeah yeah so you uh -huh. you 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 invested like thousand dollars in GameStop uh, uh, because uh, you, you had a you had a uh, you had a you, you you saw a chart is having a good technical setup, and then you have another thousand uh, uh, dollars invested in Apple, which is also having strong chart, uh, good technical setup. So uh, oh. which one you are comfortable to hold a little longer uh, if the trade went against you? It's Apple because it's fundamentally stronger. Yes, exactly. So, so mixing both fundamental and technical analysis are going is going to make you even even better trader. Um, and uh, uh, like I said, uh, uh, if you if you if you master both of them, then then uh, you can actually build your sound long term portfolio as well as pick good technical trades. So yeah, I would I I personally take the middle ground for me. Okay, uh, Ishan, hope that answered your question as well. Um, uh, yeah, it did. Okay. You also recommend using leverage when trading. Um, 
Very good question, Ishan. Um, leverage is exactly like borrowing money, right? Uh, so, so basically, personally, I don't recommend using leverage. At least, uh, at least for the first three to four years of your trading experience, do not ever go and uh, use your uh, leverage money. It's a very high risk uh, uh, using leverage money uh, because, uh, uh, especially with the trading platforms, what they do is uh, they give you one to four leverage ratio. Uh, one, yeah. So if you invest like uh, uh, ten thousand dollars, they actually give you leverage of uh, thirty thousand dollars. So, so now you're uh, you can actually trade up to forty thousand dollars. So the bad thing about this is, uh, let's say uh, you are actually uh, ten thousand is the highest saved money you have, and you put everything. And if you actually tapped leverage and uh, uh, you used up the entire forty thousand. And the stock, uh, the trade went against you. Now you not only lost your entire ten thousand, which is okay. That that is something you can actually recoup out of uh, uh, by by probably maybe doing like uh, additional part times or uh, 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 managing your costs and stuff like that. But now you, you actually owe the trading the trading broken company thirty thousand dollars. Even even if you're, uh, let's say, uh, I'm I'm giving a hypothetical example, but let's say you, you, the stock went down uh, by twenty dollars and you lost almost like uh, fifteen thousand dollars. Now you owe the the trading broker uh, five thousand dollars, which you need to repay. And unless you repay uh, until you repay them, the, you you will you will be owing them interest as well. So until you are highly experienced. Uh, and you really know what exactly you are doing, do not tap into the leveraged money. That's my strong recommendation. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have another question. It's kind of yes. off topic. But are you still bullish on the NVIDIA stock even after it went up so high? Am I still bullish on the NVIDIA stock? Even if it went, it went up so high. Um, very good question. Um, fundamentally, I don't like Nvidia stock. So, okay. so basically, uh, uh, so so uh, when I'm when I'm when I'm not fundamentally comfortable on a company, I don't even want to touch that company, because like like I said, like right now there are over three thousand uh, uh, companies that are trading on uh, uh, NYSE. New York Stock Exchange, right? So, so uh, why you want to st stick to one company? There are there are two thousand nine nine ten options out there for you to go after. So, so if you are not comfortable, doesn't matter how strong the company is. Uh, if you are not comfortable, don't don't touch it, because uh, you will have that always on on the back of your mind. Uh, basically, take trades where you are most comfortable. And uh, where you have uh, uh, your risk uh, reward. Uh, reward. Yes. Someone has the question. Yeah. Thank you. Hmm? Right. Uh, round the horn. Uh, any last minute questions? All right. I really hope uh, I, I gave you some very useful information today. Uh, and uh, I hope you guys uh, do you. Okay. It's an old question. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sandeep. Really appreciate this. Is, uh, nowhere you will get this kind of knowledge. Even, even if you go to the internship somewhere else, you will not, uh, students, you will not get this kind of knowledge. This is the power of networking and uh, Atmea platform and uh, networking. If you're not, doing, if you're not uh, networking, you're not doing any work. So that's how I came to know all these smart people, Sandeep and uh, Venkat and other people and the Kamesh. So let's, uh, let's get the knowledge from them. And uh, one last thing, do not do any trading. This is only for education purpose. You are doing internship. So I do. I recommend not to do any trading. Learn the fundamentals. Someone is asking advice. Not how to do this. As Sandeep said, you have to make your own 
test master for you know to do that if someone says it is gambling that is wrong even some of the people whom we taught they said it is a gambling no you how to do it how to do it that's why you need to have degree why you are doing degree in the finance or computer science because you need to master the format in your way you have to master the fundamentals of the stock trading then you can advance paper trading then to go for real trading anyway you're not you're not there to invest if you want you can monitor your tax portfolio how the market works must learn the fundamentals and ask the question that is the one thing i'm not missing i'm this is you are young people i don't know high school i never been i went to high school in america you guys don't ask any questions you have to ask the questions that is the purpose of this calls you have to come out of your comfort zone don't be shy even it is a stupid question ask them that is very very important with that thank you all thank you sandeep uh, it's almost one and a half appreciate it. thank you